All right, hello Zoomers. So, I wanna talk in this video about suckless programs. Not one particular suckless program, but suckless in general. Because there are a lot of misconceptions out there, and I just want people, you know, in order to really get what you want out of suckless programs, you have to wrap your mind around them. Now, what are suckless programs? Actually, we should talk about what suckless actually is, because I know there are many people watching my channel who don't know, despite the fact that I've done many videos on their stuff. Uh, suckless is a kind of cabal of programmers, and they're dedicated to very minimalist, bloat-free software. Um, everything is supposed to be not just few lines of code, but very well-written, very economical, not just for speed, but also ignoring, uh, you know, getting rid of bugs, getting rid of the potentiality for bugs, and, uh, you know, you can't really mess up something that's very small. That's the idea. And Suckless, I think, builds off a lot of the general idea of the Unix philosophy and stuff like that, but that's not for this video. Um, so Suckless has put out a whole bunch of really interesting programs. Now, you can, they of course have DWM, which is their window manager, ST, which is their terminal, Surf, which is their browser, and then they have a gajillion tools, many, many of which I've done videos on. Uh, I know I've done videos on uh, DMenu, a gajillion ones on that. Uh, Scent for making presentations, that's a great program. Uh, I definitely encourage you to check these out, but some people have some concerns because suckless programs are usually very different from what you're familiar with. Now, if you're a novice user, they'll be a little confusing. But even worse, if you're a non-novice user who knows a lot about how Linux programs usually work, you might be a little, I don't know, discombobulated by uh, suckless programs. Um, now recently, I, I do this video sort of because I, I noticed that another channel on YouTube, uh, this is DistroTube, um, the guy there, Derek, said that he is going to use suckless utilities as a challenge, just, just sort of for fun. And he talked about some of the problems that he uh, has, I guess the, the bumps he's run into, and of course people in the comments talk about the same things. And I, I just wanna give some people some hints about things. So first off, the biggest, the biggest uh, thing that people complain about in suckless programs is that they don't have config files in the way that you usually think about them. You can't open up, if you have ST, you can't open up your STRC and change your con uh, configs. One of the, re I mean, there are different reasons that suckless programs don't have config files because, uh, you know, if you, oh, you know, you run your program and it's reading an extra file, that's bloat. It's also a place where bugs or errors or user error can come from. So, suckless programs are usually constructed in such a way, actually, I'll CD into one of my suckless programs, ST. This is my build of ST. And uh, usually, let me make that clean. Um, usually, they will have a config file, this, um, you know, config.h. And this is where you make all the changes to, and then you recompile the entire program, and now your changes are active. So that seems to a lot of new users like really difficult because, oh man, what, I have to recompile the program every single time I use it? Now first off, yeah, that's true. You can patch the ability for, uh, you know, my ST, my, my terminal, although it's a suckless program, it happens to read my X resources file. I've patched that into it. Um, but if you are just annoyed by the prospect of recompiling things, because you have to, oh, I have to CD to the directory and I have to sudo make install it and that takes time, you don't have to do that. You got kids, you're using Linux or whatever. You can automate everything. What you can do, let's open up our vimrcs. I know we're all vim users, or at least people who. Uh, know how to use some kind of extensible text editor. I'm not going to name any other ones. Um, but one thing you can do, for example, in Vim is, let's say you can tell Vim, whenever I'm editing a, a config.h file, recompile this program. So actually, let's do this. So I'm going to actually copy this, um, and then we'll, we'll actually label it. So recompile suckless programs automatically. So in Vim, of course, there are these auto commands and you can have your auto commands run. Uh, buff write post just means after you save a file, run this command. It runs whenever your file is named like this. I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna rename this to config.h or config.def.h. And the thing I'm gonna run is going to be sudo make install. Just save that in Vim you never have to manually compile a suckless program again. Let's let's do that real time, kids. 
Um, so I'm gonna open up, well, up oh, so you can have whatever, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Whatever alias opens up your config file, make whatever changes you want, save it, and look, look down at the bottom, it's actually running automatically. So you don't have to worry about that at all. It's not like it takes any time for these programs to recompile, so you don't have to worry about that. Actually, let's get rid of that. Um, so I don't do that myself, but that's just, if you're, if that's the thing you're complaining about, don't worry about it. Just put it in Vim, put it in whatever else, or even just have a script automatically do it if you don't, if you don't want to deal with it. So that's one thing. Now, another thing is that one, so one thing that's difficult about suckless programs to even talk about is that first off, a lot of their tools, like for example, D menu. Now, if you've watched my channel, I do so many things for D-Menu. I mount USB drives with D-Menu. I insert emojis with D-Menu. I run commands with D-Menu. But if you really ask someone what D-Menu is, well, it's a program that takes standard input and gives you options based on each line. It's a program that's hard to understand because suckless programs are often designed not to do anything. Instead, they work well with how you use something else. And that's the one thing you need to understand about all these programs. Another one, this one I don't use, but it is you know worth looking at, uh, tabbed. So suckless programs like, for example, Surf, the browser, or ST, their terminal, do not have tabs. I, in fact, I, I think it's really, I understand tabs and browsers, but tabs and terminals, that just oh, confuses me. But if you want to have tabs, instead of having separate you know, tab software, tab code in each one of the suckless programs for running tabs, there is one program called tabbed, where you can basically embed your, you know, run your program so it's embed in tab, embedded in tabbed, and then you can run multiple instances on top of each other. So that's the sort of suckless mentality where you have these features, but the features are not all in one program. They're decentralized, uh, you know, in different parts of the system. That sometimes means a little bit of creativity when you're putting together a system. Um, but again, I mean, as I said, you know, D menu, for example, uh, mounts and unmounts drives for me, it, you know, detects what displays I have and I can choose which one I want to use. You can do anything with these programs when you really get in the mindset. Um, one best example of this is actually Surf, the browser. Now I don't use Surf, as you can see from here, I'm just using Firefox here, but um, a lot of people misunderstand Surf because if you run it, actually I'll run Surf, run it on my own website. So this is what Surf looks like. It's just a window, you know, it, it shows your browser, you can click on stuff, whatever. Um, but the thing that people don't often understand about the suckless utilities is you're not supposed to, Surf is not an equivalent of Firefox. It's not supposed to, it's not a browser in the same way Firefox is. Firefox, again, has all these tabs, it has bookmarks, it has all these other things that are part of its program. But in if you have the suckless mentality, how you're supposed to think of this is say, well, really, my web browser is a decentralized mesh. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say instead of having, keeping all my bookmarks in Firefox and saving them in Firefox's, um, you know, uh, default, uh, you know, whatever it is, bookmark saving thingy. Um, instead, let's say I just have a text file on my computer and I list out all the sites that I like. That's my bookmark file. And then I can take that text input, send it to D menu to present me a menu in my surf instance. And that will give me, a, you know, a bookmark menu effectively. If I just press a key binding that I bind, Oh, look, now I have a bookmark menu. Or now I can change my, um, you know, I could add suggestions from that or something like that. So a lot of people will install suckless programs and they'll say, it doesn't do what Firefox does or it doesn't do blah, 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 blah. And it's like, that that's the point. Um, I, now, I'm not, none of these programs, no suckless program is a drop-in replacement for the, the programs you're used to using. Well, I mean, some are, frankly, but some aren't, like Surf, for example. Um, but once you get in the suckless mentality of, uh, again, like viewing it not as, you don't think of this as a browser in the same way that Netscape was a browser. Now that was a good browser. Um, but think of it in terms of this is just a window that shows some URL. I can send it a URL from my terminal or from some script or from something else. 
and it's nice and easy like that. I mean, keep in mind, I mean, even this, this program doesn't even have, uh, you know, in order to type in a U, use the URL bar, it uses dmenu as a URL bar. Doesn't even, you know, everything is decentralized, everything's a slightly different program. So the takeaway, I, I think, should be that if you're experimenting with suckless programs, just bear in mind they're different. I mean, the, the entire paradigm is different. Your mindset has to be different when you're approaching them. They're not equivalent, but suckless programs have this great tendency to be so manipulatable. You can do so many things with it. I mean, you know, look at this. Let's select emojis. Wow, this is fantastic. Get all the emojis you want, insert them, you know? Um, there, once you get in that mentality, there are so many things that you can do with them that uh, it really just blows everything else away. Um, but uh, anyway, so that's all I wanted to do. Noth nothing really huge, but uh, just uh, stop and think. Before you get mad at a program you're trying, just stop and think about what it's actually doing and what kind of things you can, you know, if you are willing to step out of your comfort zone, I guarantee you it will be much more comfortable. So anyway, that's about it, and I will see you guys next time.